You guys pumped up? Hell yeah. It's our last show of the tour. I'm very excited. It's gonna be fun. I hope. We hope so. All right, it's time to go. Let's go. Most importantly? Yeah, the double vodka. <laughs> They go that way. Hello, London! How you doing out there? Wow, this is all right, isn't it? <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming out. My name is Dave Warnke. Welcome to another episode of Do Go On. And I'm joined on stage by two of the greatest people ever. It's Matt's children, just Perkins. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How high are we? Look at the ants down there. Yeah. <laughs> Suckers. This is like real theatre. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think real theatre is? <laughs> it's this. <laughs> For four hours. Earlier today we did a show in a pub. <laughs> now look at us. <laughs> All the way up here. <laughs> yeah, was just try and just try. Just try. Uh, no, sorry. Oh, come on, just uh, try. We're just so far above you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. This is very cool, though. Thank you so much for coming yeah. out. You have a good night, Sunday night. Is it Sunday? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know what day it is. Whatever. No, oh, where to brag? Yeah. I also like that we have this enormous stage, and our chairs could not be much closer. That's how we like it. We like to be nice and close and cozy, right, Matt? Big time. Yeah. <laughs> you were about to move away. Yep. Yeah, we love to be real <laughs> cozy. Look at that over here. That feels all right. <laughs> all right, well, uh, welcome, to that. Sh- welcome to the show. We're going to do it like this. Never done this before, but that's all right. I'm going to go over here now. Spoil nearly knocked your drink space. onto your iPad. That was good. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I nearly spilled my drink. Oh, that would have been fun. All right, this is the show. Um, we... Going over here. Here's Mark. Behind a curtain. Wanted to stay hidden. Hi, Mark. Thought I'd point him out instead. <laughs> Look, what? it's been a long tour and we're um, probably still a little jet lagged and tired and... Um, <laughs> That's your excuse for everything. <laughs> and I will continue to yeah. use it. Well, I need a nap, I'm jet lagged. That was two and a half weeks ago, that fly. Yeah, well, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm a tired girl. Anyway, Dave, explain things. Oh, well, I've, I've been asking our way around in different cities. I'm like, oh, what does the audience want the show to be, right? Because yes. we can do really whatever you like. Um, I think, where, where did they, they wanted a strip show in Bristol. Yep. And we delivered that. Um, hey, we give you what you want. But we, we have already done that. So, um, we need, what's, what do you want? What do you want, man? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Two hours of silence. Can do. <laughs> he just wants a place to relax. Would it help if I did this naked? <laughs> no. Oh, would not I be veto helpful. that one. <laughs> now, how about we do an episode of the Do Go On podcast? Now, ladies and gentlemen, give me a round of applause if you've ever heard our show before. <laughs> people. Most people, maybe. That is an enormous relief. Well, that is genuinely very nice. But uh, I also always like to give a shout out to the people that have never heard the show before. So don't be shy. Give me a round of applause and cheer now if you've never heard the podcast before. Yes! Yeah. Right. I love you, Wood, and you were like, all right, everyone else is doing it. Yeah, no. Nice. Do you want to be the only one? Oh, thanks so much for coming out. When you were told it was a podcast, you didn't think it would look like this, did you? Yeah. <laughs> did people come to this thing? My goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much for the people that did come, though. Thank you. Which is you. <laughs> this is also um, the biggest show I've ever done, so thank you so much for coming out yeah. to it. It would have obviously been rough uh, without you guys. <laughs> Still would have been the biggest room, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we claim that. Yeah. Our podcast studio at home is very small, so this just would have been nice. I still probably would have done that bit about, <laughs> you know, being over there and then, and then going over there. Bit of fun. You guys remember that? That was fun. Remember that? <laughs> Tell your grandkids about Let's that list one. our top three favourite things that have happened so far. <laughs> Nearly spilling my drink. 
Now, for the, uh, a couple of people that haven't heard the show before, basically what we do is we usually uh, do a report on a topic one of us does, suggested by a listener most of the time, and the other two people don't know what the topic's going to be. But a few shows on this tour, we have been uh, picking a theme and then all doing a mini report on that topic. Uh, so we still don't know what the other people have chosen. And today, Matt, what is the topic that the three of us will be reporting on? We put this up for a vote on Patreon. What um, mini topic umbrella report would they like? Fuck. It's amazing that they had an answer for that weird question. But <laughs> what topic umbrella report? They got uh, halfway through that sentence and just shut their computer. <laughs> uh. It ended up being uh, urban mysteries and myths and legends, which is a bit of fun, hopefully. Just is that right? Did I say that right? Uh, I mean, in that yeah. ballpark, sure. That's can I? Ballpark. Can we just call it urban myths? Sure. You happy no. with urban myths tonight? <laughs> All right, let's get with Urban Myths. I'm happy with that's that. That's not what... It's Urban Legends, isn't it? Fuck. Anyway, whatever. I don't care. As what's, long as it's what's urban. The yeah. That's the main thing. What's the difference between those two? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I'll field this one. Um, <laughs> You'll field the question I asked you. Myths? Myths aren't true and legends could be? That sounds about right. Yeah. End of report. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, well, that's Matt done. Uh, on to Jess. Well done. Well, yeah, I'm going to kick things off today um, with my report. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen or heard the show before, uh, we always start with a question to get us onto topic. So I'll ask the boys and then I'll throw it over to you guys as well. So my question is, I wrote a question. Thank you so much. <laughs> I usually forget. <laughs> I love the people that haven't heard the show are like, wow, they're really wooing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a question. Yeah! Yeah! No, nah, I deserved that. Um, which US town went into a panic because of a story from three teenage boys? <sighs> I made it a oh. really vague, stupid question. Well, it's we've not had... Gary, Indiana, is oh, it? Oh, man, imagine, but no. Oh. Is it something that we would have any chance of knowing? Nah. Because <laughs> we've had uh, Salem go into a panic from young women. Well, spreading. it's not the question, is it, Dave? He's just, you know when you don't know something, but you still want everyone to know you're smart? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think you'll find the capital of Ecuador is Quito. <laughs> so, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, stop it. Why, why would that not be true? You, could, you chose from any facts in the world. Why would you have chosen an incorrect... Anyway, that's... <laughs> we can find about this later. Yeah. Um, does anybody in the audience have an idea? Wyoming. Not Wyoming. Has anybody heard of Flatwoods? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You took a fucking poll, did you? No. I got off this one. No. <laughs> Unbelievable. But it's still... Un I speak for the people. <laughs> what about our Wyoming friend? Did you hear, Have you heard of Flatley? <laughs> but we, you, to wait. be fair, we cannot see shit. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking at a general area. Okay, oh, three people down from you. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, I'm on the defensive early. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Welcome, yeah. thank you so much. Sunshine and rainbow. Sorry. <laughs> You do have an American accent, though, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not from the states. Oh, fuck. So where where are you from? Where are you from? What? You bloody trickster! He just had a heart attack, and he's old. That's dangerous. That messed with my heart. I did enjoy the no before because I I do love that accent. They could they could reject me like that any day, and I'd be like, thank you so much. So bloody nice to be here. Thank you. No. 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 So good. No. no. We love it. No. No, thank you for answering on behalf of everyone. Um, there's only 300 of you, so good that you could whip around so quickly. So this is fl flat <laughs> she was. Flatwoods. She was right, though, in her defence. It was a no. Yeah. There could be somebody out there very quietly like, actually, I have. But now I'm not going to pipe up because Jess will yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, sorry and welcome. Um... So this, this story is about an entity, that's a fun word, reported to have been sighted in the town of Flatwoods in Braxton County, West Virginia, 
in the US on September 12th, 1952. It's really hard not to oh, sing now. Yeah. Oh, good yes. year. Yeah. I, did I it. love that you yes. hesitated and then we're like, fuck it, I'm going for it. <laughs> Follow your gut, yes. Um, two brothers by the name of Edward and Fred May. Oh, Ed and Fred. Their parents are not creative. What? No, that's very creative. Ed and Fred. Well, you come up with two other names that rhyme. Good luck. (laughs) Matt and Pat. I came up with that. (laughs) Could you tell that wasn't me that said it? I can't believe that stumped you. (laughs) No, it was like a comedy stump. I was joking. (laughs) I guess I could totally think of some names. Ed and Fred... And, uh, and their friend Tommy said they saw a bright object cross the sky and land on the property of a local farmer. Um, the boys went to the home of Kathleen May. I'm presuming that's their mum because their names are Edward and Fred May. Unless there's multiple May families in the town, which is unlikely, so let's assume it's their mum. I'm happy to go with you on this one. <laughs> You're happy to? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, So they told their mum this story and uh, she went with the three boys plus two other kids they picked up along the way by the name of Neil Nunley, that's good, and Ronnie Shaver, less good. (laughs) All right, this sounds like some sort of secret agent. Ronnie Shaver. Really? Yeah. (laughs) That's your secret agent name. Ronnie Shaver. Any cool name and you go for Ronnie Shaver. Yeah. Hello, I'm Ronnie Shaver. <laughs> so sorry. Sounds um, to me like a more like a fake a fake name. You're in the bathroom. Yeah. You're on the phone. <laughs> oh, I've got a friend, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie Gillette. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the the group of them go, and they've also got uh, a national guard by the name of Eugene Lemon. <laughs> they are making up these <laughs> <Yeah>. names. <laughs> I've got heaps of friends. Fruit bowl and... (laughs) (laughs) Dinner plate. (laughs) Uh, When you get dinner plate on the sauce, that guy fucking goes off. (laughs) He is crazy. Um, So they get this National Guard, Eugene Lemon, and they went to the farm uh, in an effort to locate whatever it was that the boys said they'd seen. Um, The group reached the top of a hill where Neil said, Hey, saw, hey, saw. He said, hey, saw, hey, (laughs) saw. Oh, I mean, is this some sort of catchphrase he's trying to get off the ground? Yeah. Hey, saw, hey, saw, am I right? Everyone's like, shut up, Neil. Shut up. He's that guy who tries to come up with nicknames for himself. It's like, hey, guys, call me Jaguar. <laughs> I had a guy in school who called himself Maverick. <laughs> hey, I'm Maverick. No, he's, you're not. Yeah, did not catch him. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I've spoken about this on the podcast before. In year eight, I tried to, for a week, get people to call me Cobra. <laughs> And to this day, I am not called Cobra. <laughs> so feel free to try and get that happening out there. It's definitely worth a try. <laughs> Cobra, you. Cobra, how cool does that sound? How much does it not suit you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you, earthworm. But imagine me... <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, field mouse. <laughs> I was a lot tougher in year eight. Wow. <laughs> Don't it? No. I'm really I'm slimmed down. <laughs> earthworm. <since> <laughs> that should catch on. No, right. don't. Come on, put the phones away. <laughs> Hashtag Cobra. <laughs> Hashtag Earthworm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, Earthworm is just a shit Cobra. Fuck. My point exactly. <laughs> Fuck. You're a is shit you, Cobra. You think an Earthworm is a shit Cobra? <laughs> well, I mean. You're very good at geography, <laughs> biology. Less so. Not your strength. <laughs> Gabarone, the capital of Botswana. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Huh. No, I didn't know that one. All right, so Neil said that he saw pul- a pulsing red light um, and Lemon said he aimed a flashlight in that direction and momentarily saw a tall man-like figure with a round red face surrounded by a pointed hood-like shape. <laughs> Other people also claim to have seen this creature over the years. So this is when it sort of started and then it, it kind of grew from there. Um, although the description 
of this creature varied quite a lot. Um, Kathleen May described the figure as having small claw-like hands, uh, clothing-like folds, and a head that resembled the ace of spades. <laughs> Which bit? <laughs> the, the A. Spades, the symbol, yeah. <laughs> They could have chosen any A, and they were the A of space. The A. They know their typography. <laughs> so strange. Yeah. Um, there was a, a UFO writer. Sounds like the type of person you want at your dinner party. Uh, Gray Barker, making up names. And he described the figure as approximately 10 feet tall with a round blood red face, a large pointed hood-like shape around the face. That kind of matches up. Um, I like shapes, so you could call them eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Had some kind of eye-like shape. Shaped a bit like an eye, oh, where not... eyes would be. If only there was a word for yeah. that. And these eye-like shapes uh, <laughs> emitted greenish-orange light. What colour is that? Greenish-orange? Greenish-orange. Grorange. <laughs> I think. No, yep, you're right. I just forgot momentarily. And it had a dark black or green body. And the group said they smelled a pungent mist. <laughs> and some I mean, which, meal, come on. <laughs> which is also a smell called grorange. <laughs> <laughs> pungent. Um, some of them also said that they uh, later felt quite nauseated. The local sheriff and a deputy had been investigating reports of a crashed aircraft in the area and they searched the site of the reported monster but saw, heard and smelled nothing. <laughs> Which is a normal part of a police report. It There's always, a smell section. Always write it down. Yeah. <laughs> We're clear. <laughs> Wow. That is some good detective work. My guess is definitely the one of the boys farted and blamed the monster. Yeah. Or shat themselves. <laughs> I went oh, into a... I smell a monster! <laughs> definitely shat himself. The next day, a reporter from the Braxton Democrat, a reporter called A. Lee Stewart Jr. It's too many things happening in that name. Claimed to discover skid marks. <laughs> Neil? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and an odd gummy deposit. Oh. Neil! Neil, what, are you, what were you eating last yeah. night? That sounds like a dietary issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Neil needs issues. Um, which uh, were subsequent, subsequently attributed by UFO enthusiast groups as evidence of a saucer landing. Skid marks. Obviously, they have wheels. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bit of a media frenzy around this story as well because um, it was the 50s and according to former news editor Holt Byrne now we're talking uh, newspaper stories were carried throughout the country radio broadcasts were carried on large networks and hundreds of phone calls were received from all parts of the country and the National Press Service rated the story number 11 of that year so it was a pretty big <laughs> Ooh, top 11 <laughs> that's Ooh. impressive all right, mate, we would kill to be number 11. <laughs> Come on. Um, it sounds like it continued to just be an urban legend around the area from then on um, until in 2000 when Joe Nickel of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, or CSI, <laughs> decided to investigate the case. He concluded that the bright light in the sky reported by witnesses on that fateful day was most likely a meteor. <laughs> that the pulsating red lights were likely an aircraft navigation or hazard beacon. And he suggested that witnesses' perceptions were distorted by their heightened state of anxiety. Nichols' conclusion, conclusions are shared by a number of other investigators, including those of the Air Force, but that's what they want you to think. Yes. Um... But this was backed up by the fact that the night of September 12th, uh, a meteor had been observed across three different states in America, including West Virginia. So that's probably what it was. And he also concluded that the shape, movement and sounds reported by witnesses were also consistent with the silhouette, flight pattern and call of a startled barn owl. <laughs> <laughs> they do have eye-like shapes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. 
But could he explain the smell? <laughs> <laughs> Neil? <laughs> the owl shat itself. Yeah. <laughs> Neil's really clutching at straws. <laughs> Witnesses had also described the monster to be wearing a green pleated skirt, which apparently no one thought was odd. Well, it's consistent with any owl that I know. Yeah. Well, researchers believe this was probably just foliage underneath the owl. Because <laughs> it was probably perched on a branch, as owls do. So that's good. Um, researchers uh, are also concluded that the witnesses' inability to agree on whether the creature had arms... <laughs> Combined with Kathleen May's report of it having small claw-like hands, which extended it, extended in front of it, also matched the description of a barn owl. <laughs> what? With its talons gripping a branch. Oh. Mm. <laughs> now these days, locals seem to be quite proud of their monster. They've put up a "Welcome to Flatwoods" slash "Home of the Green Monster" sign on the route leading into the town. And in celebration of the legend, the Braxton City Convention and Visitors Bureau built a series of five tall chairs in the shape of the monster to serve as landmarks and visitor attractions. They're really fucking creepy. (laughs) Why chairs? Um, A great question, Dave. Why not just make a model of the... Yep. (laughs) West Virginia. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The town of Flatwoods also houses a museum dedicated to the monster... Is that Neil's backyard? It smells because of the monster. <laughs> <laughs> Neil still has issues and he's never looked into it. God, I hope... And they also have... Um, they have uh, promotional merchandise at this museum and I really hope they have magnets. Because <laughs> I want one. The monster legend is celebrated every year when the town of Flatwoods holds its annual festival called Flatwoods Day. <laughs> the three-day festival is a weekend of live music, food and craft... <laughs> That, wait, what? None of that mentioned the owl. No. Or other thing you or were talking about? monster. I blinked with both eyes. Kind of what, what bl- blinking is, isn't it? You, you blinked with both eyes. Very good. With my eye-like shapes. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, just a little fun fact. Is anybody a fan of the game Fallout 76? Fallout nerds. Fans. Nerds. Ha! Sucked in, nerds. Dave, you were practising your flossing before. Is that, the, is that related? <laughs> is that not related? I've oh, never flossed. What's flossing got to do with gaming? I don't know. <laughs> what a time to find out. I, I, I just think they're probably the two hack jokes about kids today and I thought they were from the same thing. Yeah, that does show your age, doesn't it? That makes sense that they're, they're not connected? No. Yes, Fortnite, the other game. And what did you say? Fallout. Very close, different very things. <laughs> very different things. One of them's cool. <laughs> Which one? Who fucking knows? <laughs> All I was going to say is that the monster... Oh, sorry, I forgot to say. I was oh, not, for fuck's sake. I was not flossing backstage. I cannot have that on Cobra's reputation. <laughs> that would really ruin things for me. I, can't, I don't know how. I don't know how. I honestly don't know. <laughs> Thank you. The he first kept... person to ever be arrested for flossing. <laughs> yeah, Dave was flossing up against me out back and it was no good. Was... I did not hear you complaining. It was very uncomfortable. Look, uh, all I was going to say is that the monster is in the game. That was not worth coming back to. And that is my report on the Flatwoods monster. Jess Perkins! So what, what, what... Now I can relax. What are the two games? Your mum's butt. Okay. A fun time for all. chess. What is... so? Anyway, I'll ask you it's later. It's not, yeah. You can't is, get to are it. Are they not you? both video games? Yeah, what? they are. And what? one of them has flossing, and the other. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> there are people in here who are like, I'm equally baffled, right? Yeah. Surely. Uh, let's list the games that don't feature flossing. <clears throat> Monopoly. That'd be quicker for you. It was my favourite bit because I get to watch Matt type in his password. <laughs> It's come diddly come come. 
Come, come. C. <laughs> U. Now you're trying to do the actual password while you out loud both, spelling. You can't come. do both at once. All right. Who wants to hear my report? Yay! Well, you're in for a bloody treat. <laughs> Dave choked for a second there. That was genuine panic. I was like, oh, a little boy. <laughs> He's all right. He's Please. so cute. My question is, did you guys come in late? You can find seats maybe if you want to. Or hang at the back. Yeah, that's cool. I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> I guess, whatever. I'm just going to do this report. We'll chat later. Have you ever played Fallout? <laughs> <laughs> Matt's got questions. <laughs> what is Is one it? of them cowboys? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a genuine question. That's not a joke question. My friends do some of these things. I don't know. They do some of They play games. Yeah. Okay. Any game ahead, eh? You are frequently on a show about games. Yes. Um, yes, it is gamey, gamey, game. you fucking legend. All right. I'm going to call Evan later. That's for me and that one person. All right, so... Here is my question to get on my topic, an even better topic than before. If you thought that was a topic, then wait till you hear... My question is, <laughs> what kind of mythical creature is said to haunt the Highgate Cemetery in London, one mile from where we are staying? <gasps> you were there when I realised that last yeah, night. Yeah, you got spooked. Because it was 1am. And then you said, do you want to go? And I said... Now? And you said, yeah, nah. <laughs> that was a fun chat we had. Jess had tucked me into bed about two hours early. <laughs> <laughs> he is not joking. She literally it was tucked very him nice. into bed last very night. Nice. That was a great bit. That was a great bit. She's never off. She's never off. I was wearing jeans and I was like, can I take them off? She's like, just go with it. <laughs> so I slept in pants last night. <laughs> jeans. You call pants underpants. Is this correct? So you weren't wearing pants, but you were wearing jeans. Oh, free balling every day. <laughs> That's how we live our lives. Something else we realised today, your salt and vinegar chips or crisps... This is not ...are in green packets. That's Fucking maniacs. That's normal. That has, like, really sent me I know me off. there are Aussies in the crowd. That's fucked, isn't it? That's fucked. Green is chicken. Green, green is, is chicken. chicken. Thank green you. Green is chicken. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. If you think chicken, you think green. <laughs> and even with a few Australians in the crowd, we are so outnumbered. So <laughs> you're right, we're wrong. Prawn cocktail's a normal flavour. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this place? <laughs> I personally like a bit of cheese and onion. There is, I mean, the Queen lives in this country and you're getting about with green... <laughs> salt and vinegar? It's not right. Honestly. Anyway, that's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> crisps. And you call them crisps. I actually think your crisps are better than our crisps. <laughs> your kettle chips are incredible. Just so you know that. You dirty fucking traitor. <laughs> traitor. I also love the chips from Pret. Oh. 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 Yeah. Greg's. Do Greg's even chip? <laughs> I had to eat a fucking Pratt, Pratt a manger <laughs> tonight because of this Pratt head. I felt disgusting. Look at this beautiful still water from Pratt. Anyway. <laughs> Did I try a salad? Uh, I had a, uh, a toasted sandwich. Why are we still talking about this? <laughs> And I've also got a pack of crisps from Pret to eat after the show, so... Are we sponsored by Pret? No, but we should be. <laughs> the amount of times I've brought it up so far on this tour is pretty crazy. Um, did you have an answer for my question? I have forgotten Oh, it. a dragon. Uh, it's not a dragon. A witch. It's not a witch. Give you uh, one more each. Another black Goblin. Mo uh, another monk? A no. Monk. Did anyone here know this character? It's not mole people. <laughs> an individual you guys don't know the Highgate 
Vampire. Oh. oh. Now I'm listening. Dave loves Twilight. <laughs> oh, so good. The shiny people or whatever. Are you team one of them or team the other one? <laughs> yeah, I'm on team, uh, team number one. Yeah. Good whichever choice. One, whichever one that is. Good choice. Team Eric. Is that right? I'm on team prawn cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Yuck. There's, so- there's something wrong with you. <laughs> but thank you for having us. <laughs> sorry for yelling at you. The year... Also not sorry. Oh, hang on. All right. Yeah, I'm done. Sorry. You can go. So I didn't know you were still doing a, a very fun bit there. Thank you so much. <laughs> the year was 1969. A good year. A Londoner. Nice. With... <laughs> that nice. is a good year. Nice. We just uh, booked in our seats for the return flight home and uh, guess who checked us into row 69? <laughs> both flights. Both flights. Uh, I was happy with that. It's going to be funny both times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. And the best part is behind that is the uh, row 70 is the unaccompanied minors row. <laughs> so we'll be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That'll be so good. No, it's we just... won't. We will definitely not be doing that. <laughs> it's, just, it's just three grown adults getting on a plane all going... <laughs> oh, so much fun. <laughs> We're the worst. The year was 1969. A Londoner with an interest in the unexplained named David Ferrant or something like that. <laughs> Wrote to local newspaper, the Hampstead and Highgate Express. Am I saying Hampstead? Hampstead. Yeah. Thank it's you. It's not that hard. I mean, I'm just writing it like you've fucking written it. <laughs> it's weird that the English can't speak their own language. Anyway, the Hampstead. Is that not? Stead. Oh, fucking hell. I mean, we are literally staying in Hampstead Heath. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote to the local newspaper. I've forgotten it again. <laughs> It's like, it's like Homestead. Take out the A. It's like a Homestead. The Hampstead and Highgate there Express. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> in his letter, he spoke of seeing a tall, grey, spooky figure in the Highgate Cemetery when he was passing through on Christmas Eve, 1969. <gasps> Classic Christmas Eve activity, yeah. that. You guys all pop down at the cemetery on your way home from... Church, the... yes. I find the word spooky pretty funny. Because I know it's supposed to be scary, but it sounds... It's like... <laughs> you know? Spooky. Fuck off. Yeah, you just... You just wait. Oh, no. <laughs> the letter was published in February the following year. And in it, Ferrant, or Farrant, asked if any readers had experienced a similar thing. In the following week's publication, Farrant received multiple replies. These replies described a bunch of different ghosts and mysterious figures that uh, writers had seen haunting the cemetery and surrounds, including a ghost cyclist, (laughs) a ghost tall man in a hat, a ghost woman dressed in white, and a ghost swimming in the pond. (laughs) (laughs) They were all described differently and there was hardly any overlap in the different descriptions. So people were like, I don't know if they're talking about the same one. Maybe there's a lot of ghosts. Maybe all these people are just seeing... A very active ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Two weeks later, the newspaper published an interview with another man named Sean Manchester. He believed uh, that he could elaborate on the mysterious grey man's identity. And in an article headline, Does a Vampire... They've written, I mean, in the 60s they wrote vampire, different, I guess. Does a vampire walk in Highgate? Question mark. <laughs> that, sorry, that's how Matt asks questions. <laughs> he wasn't, even though Australians go up at the end of the sentence anyway, uh, Matt was never taught that. And so he just says a question and finishes it with question mark. Um, but we love him anyway. And thank you for accepting him. I, I can hear all of this. <laughs> Talking like I'm not in the bloody room. Manchester spoke of a medieval nobleman who he believed to be buried at Highgate Cemetery. This nobleman, Manchester explained, was a master of black magic when he was alive and that he believed he had recently been resurrected by a Satanist 
and was now prowling the area at night. And swimming in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> and cycling. Cycling and dressing, dressing up as a woman. As a woman. Etc. Yeah. Be- being tall. <laughs> being tall. <laughs> the story was obviously getting some traction with the, lo- uh, the newspaper's readership as they continued to cover it over the coming weeks. According to the website britishparanormal.co.uk, <laughs> on March the 6th, 1970, the Hampstead... <laughs> oh, my God. You did it. Oh, my heart is racing. <laughs> the Hampstead and Highgate Express published an article stating that David Ferrant had found a number of dead foxes in Highgate Cemetery whilst exploring there. Sean Manchester elaborated further by suggesting that these animals had been used as a food source for the vampire that inhabited the cemetery. (laughs) I was losing momentum there and it started getting the wobbles. Soon it was alleged that the foxes were discovered with their throats slashed open and drained of all blood. (laughs) Vampire... Vampel? <laughs> vampire? Are they Vam- of vampires? Vampels? Yeah, the vampels. <laughs> oh, that's Whoa. a good name for the group that comes in soon. Let's call them the vampels. All right. Vampels. Vampire mania started reaching fever pitch with even the mainstream media getting on board. ITV, which is one of the big English TV channels. <laughs> Did you know that? Uh, They broadcast a feature about the vampire on location at the cemetery. It was broadcast in prime time on Friday the 13th of March that year. (laughs) Reporter Sarah Sarah Harris interviewed Ferrant and Manchester. And in the interview, Manchester said that Ferrant would be returning after dark to find and behead the vampire. Behead. Behead. I'm going to (laughs) behead. And he went in there, put a big vampire head on, and being head. It's confusing, but that, that is apparently what he meant. The broadcast led <laughs> to a crowd forming outside the cemetery. Some were curious for a bit of a gander, and others were there with... <laughs> with <laughs> sliding a bit of your lingo. <laughs> others were there with weapons ready to take down the vampire single-handedly. But there's a lot of them. (laughs) Many-handedly. Police were on the scene, but were outnumbered, and many members of the public were able to scale the walls into the cemetery. Perhaps due to the police and the crowd, Ferrant never arrived, and no one was able to find any sign of the vampire. Right. Oh. Isn't that spooky? Isn't it sometimes spookier when you can't see it? But you can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Spooky. (laughs) The television co- coverage only led to more Ferrant. <laughs> Did he get his own show? Is that what you mean? <laughs> it led to more Ferrant. They gave him a pilot that was picked up from the series, a feature <laughs> film. He's hitting the big time. Is yeah, he still mean? hosts a, a comedy talk show here. It's called uh, uh, Late Night with Graham Norton. <laughs> yeah, he had a big he had a big change change up in his face and name. Uh, it, it led to Ferrant attracting more heat from the cops and in August they arrested him inside the Highgate Cemetery holding a crucifix and a wooden stake. At his trial, he was cleared of any criminal wrongdoing. Apparently it was okay for him to be there at any time at that stage. It hadn't been outlawed at that time. Hmm. Although according to MysteriousTimes.com, police would later gather enough photographic evidence of Ferrant's nocturnal forays to successfully jail him. In 1974, on charges of maliciously damaging a vault and interfering with a corpse. <laughs> what is he doing? He's giving it a bloody wood. <laughs> <laughs> For those at home, Jess is doing the finger moot. <laughs> finger dick into the hand moot and... Um... <laughs> oh, I knew that was coming. I guess... Sorry. I get, that's assuming this episode is ever released. Um, <laughs> he, yeah, I assume he was, you know. Fucking it. No, I, I assumed he was oh, taking interfer- out his wooden stake and putting it into its orifices. I um, <laughs> is, that, is that what they call it here? Taking out your wooden stake. <laughs> that's what I call it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Then maybe this will put your mind at ease. France's excuse for these illegal visits was that he was just trying to communicate with the mysterious figure. <laughs> you want me to stab this body? This one? <laughs> okay. All right. Mysterious Times mentions that France's autobiography makes reference to his role as both a psychic investigator and Wiccan with an equivalent high mark of a... <laughs> with, with an equivalent rank of high priest. Oh, okay. So I think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> the Mysterious Times article goes on to say that he has since changed his public position, though, about vampires, stating that he, d- he did not, he never did, and he doesn't believe in the existence of undead, blood-sucking creatures. He never said that. Never said that. He <laughs> definitely, definitely said that. Yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, Manchester seems to still be all in and has written a book on the events. Uh, in the book, he says the vampire was at one point after a girl he knew named Louisa, a mysterious girl that he didn't really explain too much about. And as chivalry is undead, he protected her. That was the, that's my joke of the thing. And I, <laughs> I wrote it probably about 15 minutes ago. And I said to Jess, I think I just wrote a joke. Wow. But it also might have just been a a short sentence that didn't fully make sense. I wasn't sure until then, and I realised it was the latter. Okay. Chivalry is undead. Yeah, that all... That is good stuff. Maybe too clever for this crowd? I think so. (laughs) Uh, One night he followed Louisa while she was sleepwalking. So who's following who at this stage? Uh, Manchester's Sean oh, Manchester's okay. following Louisa. He's following her while she sleepwalks. Yeah, a, a girl, a young blonde girl who said he's going to look after because the vampire's after her. Right. And where is she sleepwalking? To the cemetery. Okay. And she goes to one tomb in particular, all while still in this hypnotic, trancey sleep. <laughs> More like Manchester, more like Madchester. Um, <laughs> Manchester took this to be a sign that that coffin that she went to in particular was the vampire's lair. He assembled a crack squad of vampire hunters who we call the Vamp Pals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Vamp Pals are here. Uh, I read somewhere that there was about a hundred of them, but that seems ridiculous. But I also don't really believe any of this. So (laughs) what's more ridiculous than that? All right. So a hundred of of them... (laughs) A bridge too far, mate. (laughs) So this big crew of of vamp friends, vamp pals, uh, go to the cemetery where they break in. uh, They get in without the police noticing them and head for the catacombs that Louisa previously led them to. They weren't able to get in through the gate of that particular catacomb, though. Um, So Manchester... Uh, climbed on top of the thing. You know those catacombs like building things, I guess? And he abseiled in through a hole in the roof. <laughs> He's written this whole thing himself. And then... Um, I had, shot like, a gun sideways, <laughs> like a kill shot. And everyone all, everyone with me were wearing bikinis. And <laughs> Did a sweet commando roll. Yeah. Sean Manchester isn't in tonight, is he? The lack of... Uh, applause makes this feel awkward. Um, <laughs> do you guys all know him? Is this is this guy your dad or something? <laughs> is he all of your dad? He's a London guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. And all of your dad. <laughs> uh, there they found, once they got in, they found a vampire resting in its coffin. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 this is this is this this is Manchester's account. They found a vampire. There was no journalist there with them, unfortunately, or any authorities. But Manchester said they found the vampire. Okay. It was, it was there resting in its coffin? Um, but for some reason, Manchester was talked out of driving a stake through his heart <laughs> by the by his posse by the nah, vampire. No, I don't think you should. That, apparently, one of them said, "No, we got to go. We got to get the proper clearance for this." <laughs> Who from? <laughs> From the Queen? How do you know it's a vampire and not a body of uh, a normal dead person? Uh, normal, sorry. Just sorry to shame any vampires in. 
What about the fangs? Were there fangs? The cow. The Was there a cow? Widow's Peak. Was there any of that? Yes. Matt. I assume so. Matt. Yes. Was there? Yes. Matt. I can't go any home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they talked him out of driving a stake through his heart. Instead, he put down cloves of garlic and sprinkled some holy water before performing an exorcism, which he can do, and leaving. Self-taught, I believe, but still. <laughs> Uh, the catacomb was later sealed properly by the cemetery, uh, which you'd assume is to stop people like them getting back in. But Manchester said, nah, he told them to, and that he made them use special garlic-infused concrete. <laughs> he can get <laughs> fucked. Three years later, Manchester uh, talks of tracking the vampire to an abandoned house. He's still on the scent. Probably from that garlic. So that garlic concrete is not working. <laughs> Unbelievable. I love garlic anything, to be honest. Garlic concrete? Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah, like that hard, rock hard predator manger bread. <laughs> not oh, like that. I think you find it's toasted to perfection. <laughs> not like that soft and fluffy Greg's pastries. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It just falls apart in your hands. What is happening? <laughs> um, so he tracked it down, tracked the vampire down over a few years, found it three years later in this house where it was living now. <laughs> so it's a person. Oh, it's a vampire. It's a person living in a house. But it's got like a lease and everything. Yeah. No, got you gotta a job. Do, you gotta do, you gotta do. Um, and he was there with an offsider and he ended up killing it and burning the corpse. Oh, okay. That's murder. <laughs> That's straight up murder. <laughs> No, well, it would have been if it wasn't a vampire and he wasn't saving everyone's lives. Yeah, you're right. He's a hero. The corpse the corpse disintegrated, like in the uh, movies and yeah. stuff. What, like ash when it's burnt? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Much Sorry, like that. I'm forgetting this is from his point of view, yeah. so <laughs> this all makes sense. Uh, his offsider was meant to feel, film the events, but was so overwhelmed that he forgot to. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. Uh, Manchester and Fran are now uh, kind of enemies. They don't talk anymore and have been publicly attacking each other's legitimacy. On a blog I was reading, one of them was in the comments, just <laughs> commenting on blogs. So cool. I love it. Um, <laughs> the Mysterious Times article, which I, I really enjoyed, um, concludes saying, The Highgate Vampire is a bizarre fusion of fantasy fused with reality and hammer horror. Armed with this knowledge and the dubious recollections of both Ferrant and Manchester, it is little wonder this most baffling piece of 20th century London lore is best viewed as legend. To both protagonists, though, it is more than that. The publicity they have received continues to feed both men's status as minor esoteric celebrities. They continue to engage in a bitter feud fought through fibre optic cables. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous of all fights. The mo modern day Van Helsing's. <laughs> Uh, but they, uh, but do not be too harsh against either man. Just consider how many similar events involving supernatural phenomena are constructed on shifting or swampy ground. The paranormal relies upon human mouths and hands to forge its greatest episodes. How good's that writing? Pretty good. Yeah, it's real <laughs> good. That's the end of my report. One f quick fun fact, though. This cemetery, it seems to be more famous for the... Highgate Vampire, but it's actually the cemetery where Karl Marx is buried. And now that is, it's gone back to being a place where communists go <laughs> to pray. So it, it has all come back full circle. <laughs> that is my report. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Well done, Maddie. If anybody at the bar wants to grab a vodka lemonade, I'd take it off your hands if you want. What do you, do you guys believe that? It was worth a try. Um, did I believe the vampire? Yeah. Ferrant and or Manchester? Are you a manhead or a oh, yeah. fanboy? <laughs> far, far, far I'm a, fan. I'm a manhead. Yeah. Oh, but I'm a Ferrant boy. Yeah, I thought that would split you guys. Did you yeah. anyone here heard of that now that I talk too much about it? Still no. This wild, it's just around the corner. As far as I know. Where are we? We are still in London, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a report right here to do. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Right here to do. Uh, my topic is uh, multiple myths in one place. So I'm going to give this question to Jess and Matt, and if they don't know, then maybe one of you will. In 1989, which village was named by Guinness World Records as the most haunted village in all of England? I mean, uh, you're the geography one. Sh- Shropshire? <laughs> No. Yes. Is that, is that something? What about um? What's that? Pl- we drove through that that place. What was it called again? Birmingham. <laughs> Matt, we did two shows there. We didn't drive through it. Are you okay? You know the answer to that. <laughs> uh, does anyone know the answer to the most haunted village? It is Pluckley. Three people said it. I still don't know what that word is. Pluckley? Pluckley. 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 Probably uh, spelled with a Q or something. No, it's like Pluck. P-L-U-C-K. Pluck. Okay. Uh, Pluckley is a small picturesque Love village it. located in Kent in southeast England. Do we have any Pluckers in tonight? <laughs> Few Kents, though. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of Kents. Uh, Pluckley has a population of about 1,000, so I doubt any of them came out tonight. Uh, but to be the most haunted village in England, how haunted do you have to be? Well, according to Pluckley's website, pluckley.net, quote, it is reputed to have 12, possibly 13 or 14 ghosts, <laughs> which is so specific. Is, is that specific? 12 or 13 or 14? Or 14. 12 to 14-ish. <laughs> uh, to give a bit of sizzle of the horrors we are about to hear, Ooh. website Kent Live describes some of the ghosts. Quote, The village just outside of Ashford boasts a phantom headmaster, a dying highwayman, a Victorian lady and a flickering light. <laughs> <laughs> now that's Spooky. Uh, because of all this uh, spooky material, Pluckley has become a real destination for paranormal investigators from around the world and it's also the scene for a number of uh, paranormal TV shows including the famous TV channel ITV. <laughs> <laughs> ITV show Strange But True? Question mark. And also Most Haunted Midsummer Murders <laughs> and the 90s comedy drama series The Darling Buds of May starring David Jason and Catherine Zeta-Jones. What a spooky combo. Whoa. So basically, I'm going to go through uh, some of these 12 to 14 ghosts and you tell me whether you believe them. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the sca- Matt, do you understand the rules? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, b- buzz in when you have an answer. Uh, One of the scariest sounding destinations in Pluckley is the Screaming Woods. This forested area just outside of the village is really named Daring Woods and are reputed to be the most haunted woods in all of Britain. They are nicknamed Screaming Woods because it is said to be rife with the screams of long dead men and women who became lost in the sea of trees. (laughs) I've looked at it on a map. At its widest point, it's only one kilometres across. (laughs) So if those lost people had just kept walking in any direction for 10 minutes, they would have been fine. <laughs> Screaming they just go like, all right, I gotta get, oh, it's too hot! <laughs> just give up, just give this up. This is where I die. I just want to utilise all this space we have. Yeah, I love it. I'll just sit back here for a bit. So that's uh, Screaming Wood. Jess, you you can also act out another popular area for haunting in Pluckley is a place called Fright Corner. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. I was the drama captain of my high school. You can tell. Nobody puts Jess in Fright Corner. (laughs) That drink I had was a double, and I feel pretty good. (laughs) Uh, In the 18th century, this is Fright Corner, an unknown highwayman was killed with a sword after a uh, fight broke out between him and the local law. 
who ran a sword through him and pinned him to the tree with the sword. Ew. Legend has it that a ghostly reenactment of that deadly battle is played out on the spot of the murder. Also inhabiting Fright Corner is the Watercress Lady. <laughs> Matt, do you want to feel this one? No. <laughs> She was, by a few counts, a bit of a local character. A traveller who paid her way by selling watercress to the locals. Her two trademarks were a pipe and a bottle of gin. But one evening, she fell asleep. Makes it sound like she fell asleep unlike, for the first yeah, time. Unlike every other yeah. evening. She's like, I'm going to give this a go. The pipe dropped onto her gin-soaked clothing. and Within seconds, she had erupted into a raging ball of fire. She was found the next day, a charred pile of ashes. The battered old flask and the shattered clay pipe lying nearby. In the years that followed her tragic death, she appeared as a screaming, howling figure surrounded by flame. But these days, she's calmed down a bit and is more often (laughs) seen as a ghostly figure just sitting on the bridge. (laughs) She's, She's over the fire phase of her life. You probably get used to it after yeah, a while, don't you? I'm bored of this. <laughs> hey, Dave, what's a watercrest? You know, watercress. You don't oh. fucking know. It's like a herby vegetable thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, just double checking. <laughs> Who's making sure you knew what it was? Watercrest. Hmm. She's the watercrest lady. She's like a herb. <laughs> It's like a no, herb. It's, killing so you it's water cress, no T on the end. Water cress. Most of you were being polite, but one of you was like, cress, cress. I, I'm sure I've said this before, but for a long time I thought biceps were biceps. <laughs> I just love putting a T on it. Give me a word, I'll chuck a T on it. Crest, okay, I'll, I'll do this one. Crest. Crest, thank you. Wow. Uh, it's also, so good to watch him work. So, oh, wow. King of crowd work, baby. <laughs> yeah. Another place in uh, Pluckley is St. Nicholas's Church, which is a place where you get two ghosts for the price of one. Haunted by two apparitions, one is called the Red Lady and the other one is called the White Lady. I feel like I've heard of these ones. Are they yeah, famous? They're... Well, these are two of the more famous ones in the town. I love this line from Kent Live, the website. A red lady is said to search the graveyard, whilst a white lady has been seen within the church. Racist! (laughs) No, I've just remembered there's a... There's a company back in Australia called... (laughs) It's a funeral home. (laughs) White lady funerals, that's what I was thinking of. I have heard of it, but yeah, it's it's probably not connected. And again, racist. They only do funerals for white ladies. Yeah, one of this. Well, my, my father died. Beep, <laughs> beep. My nana's funeral was through white lady. I'm not lying. Why would you lie about that? <laughs> <laughs> what a weird lie. I lie a lot of the compulsive liar. <laughs> I'm the... not lying. <laughs> All right. I say that a lot. <laughs> oh, the white lady was a young woman who, woman who was apparently buried inside seven coffins. Too many. They really didn't want her to get out. One will do. And then how big's the seventh one? It's like a babushka doll. Huge. Ah. Three more or two less. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> seven is too many. For those of you who've never been, I'm weird with numbers. Not sure why. Could be on a spectrum. Unsure. Why? I mean, is it... Is that logical? Shall we just make one thicker coffin? A, co- a garlic concrete coffin. Exactly. Thank you. Concrete coffin yeah. is fun to say as well. Have a go. Concrete coffin. <laughs> oh, oh, concrete coffin. <laughs> just like that. I can do it just like that. Just like that. You're amazing. Uh, so a bit about the white lady. The white lady haunts St. Nicholas's church and the inside of the library of her former family home, which was destroyed by fire. The white lady spectre was repeatedly seen at Surrenden Daring by employees of the US Embassy, which occupied the manor house between the two world wars. It's claimed a man called Mr. Walter held a a lonesome vigil one Christmas Eve in the library. She appeared before him, 
So he shot her apparition with his rifle. <laughs> Mr. Walter wasn't bright. <laughs> he wanted to see her. He held a vigil. She turned up. He's like, I was not ready for this. <laughs> Stop shooting. Sounds like he was ready for this. Yeah, actually. <laughs> uh, what sound did it make? Uh, what, what sound did the gun make? That's a great question. I think Matt will feel this one. So what, what era is this? Uh, between the two world wars, so let's say 50s. Oh. No, that's wrong. <laughs> 30s. <laughs> well, big I mean, reaction there. Uh, <laughs> that was me implying that there is a third world war imminent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, between the second and third world war, <laughs> please. Uh, 19. 1930s. 30s. Yeah. Okay, I know those ones pretty well. A- and it's a, a rifle. A right? rifle, sure. <clears throat> was that it? No, that was me clearing my throat. Oh. <clears throat> that was it. <laughs> wow. It is such a privilege to watch you work. Once again, I don't. did I mention that? Self-taught. Self-taught, so, yes. Um, some people think, oh, how many years did you study noise? And um, <laughs> I mean, sure, every day. I, I study noise, I listen. <laughs> hey? Put away your exercise books and your bloody laptop computers and, and use... you got all the stationery you need right here. I think the teacher's drunk. You got all the stationery you need right here. Oh, God, God. I'm going to have a nap. You're not my real class. Uh, the Red Lady is called the Red Lady because of a red rose left on her grave. And because of the Red Lady, the Church of St. Nicholas has long been a must-see place for people interested in this paranormal activity. This story is listed on London Walking Tour, or the London Walking Tour's website. They run a tour in Pluckley. This is how they get you in. <clears throat> in the early 1970s, in the hope of recording supernatural phenomena, a group of psychic researchers persuaded then-rector, the Reverend John Piddick, to allow them to spend a night locked inside the church. When the vicar came to let them out the next morning, they complained of having spent an uneventful night, the boredom of which had been alleviated only by the vicar's dog, who had come to visit them from time to time. Actually, the vicar commented, I don't have a dog. Yes! (laughs) Yes! That's my favourite type. I love that. Like, why there hasn't been a dog around (laughs) these here, Pa? (laughs) For another 30 years. That Actually, is my favourite. I don't have a dog. That was my wife. <laughs> oh, no. Dave. As the feminist on the podcast, I'd like to say that is not on, sir. You take that back. Guy, you were, that character you were doing there. Yeah. yeah. It's hard, you know, it's, you're not always the most popular when you're being the most feminist, but... Um, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. That's right. Yeah, good for you. You're I think we all learned something here tonight. And that is to stop talking, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the Daring family were lords of the manor in the Pluckley area between the 15th century and World War I. Well, those Daring seem to be up to a bit of hanky-panky because one of them bought a place called Rose Court for his mistress these days known as the Tudor lady who haunts the town. She, she smells of tuna or... <laughs> eats, she eats tuna? She haunts tuna. She haunts tuna. Yeah. Tuna. Watch out. I want to have a, a little mini break. Okay. Do you want to go in that corner? All right. Matt's on timeout. No, no. Bye-bye, Matt. Uh, at Rose Court... <laughs> <laughs> What's up? You know, the hard part about doing a kind of uh, fake walk off is it's, it's it's always hard to figure out the time to come back. <laughs> and that's the predicament Matt's in at the moment. He's back. <laughs> Thank you so much. What I miss. <laughs> 
Well, after a long day of ghost hunting, you want to get away from it all with a drink at the local pub. But even the Black Horse pub in the area is said to be haunted by spirits. Black Horse. Black Horse. Thank, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> Uh, this is the Black Horse Pub, I love this. With an invisible hand that moves items on the bar and sometimes hide purses and tidies mess. <laughs> Ooh, stop doing the dishes. <laughs> so you're wondering, where can you get a drink in peace? Well, last Halloween, moonpig.com started selling evil spirits gin. Its main ingredients reportedly coming from Pluckley. Each bottle of the green coloured gin was personally cursed by a real witch named... Is that a guarantee? Yeah. <laughs> we'll personally curse each bottle. Well, the name of that witch is Miss Julian White, who was also a part-time screenwriter. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so funny. Part-time witch, part-time screenwriter. Oh, you got to be these days. Creatives, you know, you yeah. got to... you got to do multiple things. Yeah, you got to have a At backup nights, plan. At night, she drives Uber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed how I just said Uber. <laughs> Uber. God, the Australian vernacular. It's so... Mm. How do you say? How do you say? How do you say? <laughs> how do you say? <laughs> Uber. A certain... Uh, a je ne sais quoi. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Well, Miss Julian White put a spell on every drink and the spell, quote, empowers the drinker to follow whatever their hearts desire, whether it is for good or evil. <laughs> During the distillation, the gin was infused with possessed apples and mint that were <laughs> and mint grown in Pluckley. <laughs> it was available for 13 pounds. <laughs> you go. Possessed apples. Fuck off. <laughs> so to wrap up here is... That's why I don't eat fruit. Yeah. It's not good for you. <laughs> Is Pluckley really haunted? Well, this is debated across the internet, many claiming that some of the stories were just made up in the 20th century for publicity. Sadly, Guinness World Records no longer recognises the most haunted town in England, mainly because they now focus on world records. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I myself was quite a sceptic when I came to this, but then I came across this real-life anecdote on a Kent message board, <laughs> and it instantly changed my mind. This was submitted by a user called Susie21 just over a year ago. <clears throat> On her way home... Sorry, I don't think that's what Susie sounds like. <laughs> and... <laughs> On her way home... <laughs> a couple of years ago... It was a foggy old night... And visibility on the roads out there wasn't great. Plus, it's pitch black when it's out in the sticks. Suddenly, from out of the fog came an almost musty yellow colored cloud. Oh, <laughs> Neil. <laughs> it was traveling faster than the fog. It was solid. And as I was approaching our car, I pointed it out to one of my sons. It went under my car and out to the other side. I have never seen anything like that before and I was eating chips. <laughs> Which we had bought just before our journey. They had gone stone cold afterwards. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Susie 21 finishes. In my opinion, the areas around Pluckley are haunted. Of course, one or two stories would have been made up over the years, but not all. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, on the same message board, a man named Marco929 just wrote, <clears throat> the most frightening thing about Pluckley are the house prices. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and that is my report on Pluckley. Wow. Wow. What do you what do you reckon? That sound 
I mean, there's 12, 13 or 14 ghosts there. One of them's got to be real. Yeah, I reckon it's definitely the yellow fog <laughs> that what? made her chips cold. <laughs> oh. I'm with you. I was a naysayer until the cold chip incident. That really, really... There's nothing over. that explains that. It has to be paranormal. <laughs> I reckon, Ooh. yeah, the stray dog who was there yeah. for a bit, that was fucking <laughs> spine tingling. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that, that? a dog was... being there for a bit? <laughs> no, I mean, that dog, it couldn't have come from anywhere. It must have been from the other side. <laughs> I do, I love that. No, it was great, Dave. I reckon they're all true. And yeah, there are a few Kents in tonight. Is that right? Are we near Kent? We're not you too pe- far from Kent. Not that far, South East England. Are people genuinely from Kent? Yeah. Wow. Yes, again, one has taken a... Well, I mean, I, well, I think in this case, when you're saying yes, if you're from you're t- Kent... About, you're talking about yourself. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about that. It's been a long trip. <laughs> I'm a little cranky. <laughs> My chips went cold earlier. <laughs> in an and unexplained that has upset fashion. Me. <laughs> that's, that's upset me. Can we get chips on the way home, please? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is, yes, definitely. Oh, but that does bring us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for coming out to our final show of the UK Tour, London. You have been fantastic. See, seeing as this is our last show, would you guys mind if we uh, take a photo with you guys in the background? Would you mind that? That'd be okay. Would it be possible to get the house lights up for a sec? Al, would that be okay? Thank you so much. And while we're doing that, can we have a big round of applause for Al and everyone here at the venue? Thank you. Thank you so much, we Al. We love it here. Oh, nice. And he's going to come on stage now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Chatterley <laughs> from Indie Entertainment. He's the, one re- the main reason we are here. So thank you so much, Mark. We really appreciate that. He made it all happen. Thanks so much, Mark, your bloody legend. Uh, and then after the show, um, if anyone wants to, we'll be... Did Dave already say that? No. I have not said anything. We're going to be down that corner over there um, uh, signing or meeting or whatever. You say I've never done this pitch part at the end. <laughs> Jess is real good at it. <clears throat> Even calling it a pitch was weird. You feel free to fuck off. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> well, yes. I, don't need, I don't need to shake your hand. <laughs> okay. That's all not right. about me. Okay. 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 Shh. Shh. Sorry. Our chips went cold earlier. <laughs> yeah. Very stressful. You understand. And um, we will be in the back corner. We've got some posters. Uh, we may have some T-shirts left, a handful of T-shirts left. Um, if you want to come up and say hello, you're more than welcome to. You are allowed to leave. <laughs> That's fine. Um, we'll just be up there and it's... Uh, it's Seriously blown our mind that we've been able to come over to the UK at all, let alone doing a sh- our biggest show ever here. So truly, thank you so much. Thank you. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Now look excited. Thanks so much, everyone. I couldn't see you, but did you look excited? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Did they? Yeah. Oh, you panicked. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you were not expecting that. And he went, oh, maybe? <laughs> and that's a fair answer, yep. Oh, that does bring us to the end of the tour and the end of the tour. And England and both uh, England and Scotland have been so, so kind to us on this tour. So as a mark of respect, <laughs> we've decided to end the show by playing your national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it, Al! I don't know it from here on. It's not unusual to see me cry. I wanna die. Oh, that's the end. Thank you so much, London. Good night.